guys, Ash here, come back today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Hopefully it finds you all doing well. If not, send us some positive vibes your way today, especially if you need it out there. Been getting a lot of heartfelt comments uh, recently. Uh, shout out to any of you guys or gals who have dropped a, a line, said, uh, you know, you, you maybe lost somebody going through some health, a relationship, a breakup, no matter what it is, my heart goes out to you guys. Uh, through the computer screen that you're viewing me right now, just send you a little bit of peace and positivity today to kick off this video. What I want to do is talk about Clam Boss, and I want to specifically tune in on my favorite epic champions for the old school Demon Lord Clam Boss, and I figured it's a beautiful time to revisit this because, well, now we have the quick battles in the game. How are you guys enjoying quick battles? Uh, I'm actually going to post a community tab poll maybe at the time of this recording, so a, a day or so earlier. Maybe my lovely editor Osama can post the results there. Nothing. But I'm curious how you guys are liking the quick battles. I know there's been a lot of kind of negative sentiment around, uh, you know, not being able to one key a certain specific area, not being able to use the quick battle feature. Uh, I, I don't want to, you know, negate or, or ignore those concerns. I think they're absolutely valid, 100%. And, you know, I, I hope that they continue to improve this feature. However, with that said, I am a massive massive fan of the quick battles on clan boss i'm actually using all my keys i actually pay attention to where i get my my next key so i can do brutal and hard every day if i can get in there in time uh yeah i'm really enjoying the time saving and what i'm doing with that extra time personally is i'm allocating it to farm my uh my doom tower bosses something that frankly i probably did like once a month you know Anybody out there like me, I was really bad. I did all my dungeon, my Doom Tower floors. I was good at that, at least on the hard track uh, and on the, the 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 easy or the normal track on my mini account. Uh, but beyond that, farming, in, in, with the exception, excuse me, of Dark Fae, man, I was never doing it. Now I'm, I'm reallocating my save time and really, that's that's all I've been asking for, right, in this game, is give us more mechanisms to save time. That way we can spend it in other areas where we want to improve inside the game or take advantage of because, you know, there's only so much time in the day. Anyway, guys, I thought we would go over my favorite epic champion. So without further ado, I was going to at first rank this top 30 in order, which I love doing. I love ranking because it really brings out your opinions, right? Uh, however... They're just it, There's so many great champions that it really absolutely depends on what you need on a team, right? So it's hard to compare a uh, a, a Reviver to a, uh, a DPS champion. How do you rank them, you know? Anyway, without further ado, we're going to start with Fane. Fane, she never misses the ab day at the gym, man. At the mouse gym? Is she a mouse? She's a mouse, I would say. Uh, she never misses the ab day at the gym. That's the first thing I always notice about her. I don't know why. Call me creepy. Checking out my mice. Perfect. Anyway, on the A1, we have a two-time hitter, stealing turn meter. Okay. On the A2, we have a two poisons and the big version of decreased attack on a three-turn cooldown. Wow, what a great ability. Then on the A3, we have decreased defense and weaken big versions on a four-turn cooldown, but it lasts for three turns, dude. Fane is really one of the best. She has a damage and really, you know, three of the most essential debuffs, four of the most essential debuffs, if you include poison in her kit, she's definitely up there in the best of the best out of epic champions. Fane, I, I took so long to invest in Fane, and I do not regret it, guys. Very fun champion. Sometimes, I'm such a fan of Fane that I already have my team all built, my, my, uh, my demon uh, lord team, and it doesn't have Fane. Sometimes I just sub her in. Just for the heck of it. <laughs> just just to try to play her a little bit more because I love her that much. Anyway, next up is going to be Fat Man. Fat Man is one of the coolest champions added in the last couple of years, guys. He's an ally attacker who brings crit rate and crit damage to the table. He also has a burn and two poisons on a three turn cooldown you love that hey but wait there's more he also has a 50 percent chance to decrease a defense on the a1 now that 50 percent chance on the a1 to me it's not dependable enough to rely as the only decreased defense at only a 50 percent land rate but heck everything else that he's bringing to the table is amazing plus that extra damage i love the fat man now this champion i actually mentioned in a video God, I forgot, I forgot what I was talking about in that video, but I was actually shocked. Quite a few of you guys agree with me in the comments. I thought I was the only person that loved the bug. Uh, it's Urtic, Urt, Urticata, excuse me. Urticata is a very, very underrated bug demon spawn champion. She's pretty cool. She's got the, uh, the hands across the chest. Uh, does her hands ever break free or, or what? 
she definitely she was released the same time as Vildrex. I think her and Vildrex are kind of they've got that bug love connection going on. I would say I'm adding my own champion lore to the game here. Either way, guys, she's really good. She's got a poison on each hit on the A1. Excuse me, decreasing the duration of poisons on that A1. Then she has a triple hit <clears throat> each hit. Poison sensitivity, that is a very dependable land because it's uh, on each hit 50% chance. And then we have a four time at random with Hex. So now she's bringing increased duration of poisons. She's bringing poison sensitivity and she's bringing a dependable Hex. And then on this passive, whenever either this champion or ally lands a critical hit on an enemy under Hex, has a 25% chance of placing the big version of poison for one turn. Listen, you just gotta invest in her and take my word for it. This, because it's not just her, it's an ally too. With a whole team, man, you start just absolutely just landing tons of poisons out of this passive. She's the best poisoner in the game that doesn't have poison in her regular active skills, I would say, right? She also has speed and all battles, which is nice as well. All right, next up is going to be, of course, we're going to include the obvious, right? Maneater, right? He's the, still the king of unkillable. There's double man eater, the single man eater teams. He's got it. He also has block debuffs. Uh, really essential for the stun and for obviously, well, an unkillable comp, right? So not much else to say about Mr. Man Eater here. He's just an absolute stud of a champion. And hey, while we're at it, guys, we might as well give the nod to Demitha. Demitha is amazing. She's got the block damage and continuous heal on a three turn cooldown. But then this A2 as well. She's decreasing the duration of all ally debuffs. She's also increasing the duration of all ally buffs. You guys already know this, and if you're a new player, now you do know. Any champion that's increasing the duration of all ally buffs, specifically for clan boss, but really almost everywhere in the game, it's a really, really amazing ability, okay? Uh, so definitely one of the best, if not the best, clan boss champions in the game overall for epic champions in Demitha. Heck, even including legendary, she's really one of the best. All right, next up, guys, is going to be Aox, the Rememberer. Pretty cool champion. He's got a, a poison on his A1. Only thing is is each hit has a 30% chance of placing that poison. It's not that high for my liking personally, but hey, it is two poisons potentially. Uh, more often one maybe on that A1. He's got a heal on the A2, on the A3, decrease attack. It's on a three turn cooldown. And then he has a decrease crit rate as well. Not a bad ability. Of course, the decrease attack uh, is essential, right? Uh, for non-unkillable teams. And then increase the duration of two random debuffs on the attacker by one turn when hit occurs once per hit when attacked a uh, really really nasty passive for clan boss it's one of the better ones out there steward of time it's increasing durations of poisons but you know obviously all the essential debuffs the decrease attack the decrease defense and uh the everything else the weakens right so really really nice ability here uh complementing already a nice kit uh for support clan boss all right next is going to be none other than the second Third? I'm losing count, man. It's third, right? After Ryan and Archmage Helmet, Doom Tower, Normal Champion. It's Dark Hail, guys. Dark Hail on his A1 instantly activates two poisons or a poison and an HP burn. It is a triple hitter. You love it. 35% chance on each hit to instantly activate. He is coming in with a decreased attack on his A2 on a three turn cooldown, 100% land rate. Also chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. For obvious reasons, it's an incredible ability for clan boss on the A3. He's placing not one, not two, but three poisons and the poison sensitivity. Also mitigating crit rate, which is 15% on the Demon Lord. He's mitigating it all on his passive of delirium as long as the target's under two or more poisons which is almost always the case when dark kills on your team he has really one of the better kits out of every uh, uh epic champion out there as well certainly would be in my top five or ten certainly in damage uh for for clan boss next up is going to be i just did a video on this champion probably three or four days ago check it out in case you missed it guys i've been sleeping on venom age for so long what a great champion we have instant activation up to two poisons 50 percent hit on or 50 percent lane or uh, chance excuse me on both hits on that a1 
very, very, very good ability. We're also bringing the big version of decrease defense and decrease attack if the target's under a poison debuff. Oh, man. So the big version of both of the most essential debuffs for Clan Boss on a three-turn cooldown. We also have two poisons on a three-turn cooldown on the A3. Heal reduction, not that valuable, but... We do have damage mitigation, 15% from that passive. So it actually gives a reason to have one of those debuff slots taken up. There's only 10 of them taken up by a heal reduction. It gives us damage mitigation on that passive. Venomage is truly a, a just a stud of a champion, not just for clan boss, but for all kinds of areas in the game. Man, I was sleeping on, on Venomage for so long. Next up is going to be Seeker. The Bat Eater, the Batman, the Bat everything. Daddy, chill. Go to deadwoodjedi.com. Um, check out clan boss compositions with all of these champions that I'm mentioning or most of these champions that I'm mentioning in today's video and Seeker is going to be probably one of the most familiar faces that you see he is a champion that is synonymous with uh, clan boss really other areas of the game like arena too but I mean he's got that turn meter fill 30% with the extra turn on a three turn cooldown it allows you to speed up your team make things possible that weren't possible before especially uh, specifically for unkillable teams with man eater etc Next up is going to be one of my personal favorites. Am I saying that too often that people are my personal favorites? I feel like I might. It's Taragi the Frog. It's the Frog Man. He's going to decrease attack on his A1, 40% chance of landing. On the A2, he has a Provoke. Uh, okay. On the A3, he's got a Shield on this champion. Ally Protect on everybody else. This is on a three-turn cooldown. Not many. There's a few, but not many epics have the big version of Ally Protect on a three-turn. He's also here healing himself and the heal increases for each poison on the enemy team great for clan boss great for a poison team and he's bringing poisons on the passive toxic blood when attacked has a 50 percent chance of placing that poison occurs once per hit big version two turns you'll love to see it Frogman is really, really good. Underrated in a lot of ways. All right, next up is going to be the debuffer and the speed booster. Again, uh, you know, making kind of like Seeker, right? Making things possible that otherwise wouldn't have been because of kind of the similar mechanic, right? He's got the turn meter fill and he's got the extra turn mechanic all in the three turn cooldown. Absolutely amazing. He's also bringing a decreased defense and a leech on his A1. He's also got speed in all battles by 19%. Deke is is an incredible champion, not just for clan boss, for Dark Fey. I mean, I could just keep going on and on. It's just really one of the better uh, epics out there in the game. Ogryn tribe time, guys. It's Urogrim. Ooh, he's still got it. I love Urogrim. He's a very, very cool champion, guys. He kind of pushed champions like Steel Skull off of the list. A little bit of a different kit, but he does it better. Anyway, he's got poisons on each hit really nice it is a 45 percent chance 50 with sniper on each hit on the a1 he's got a cleanse from an ally then a heal great for the stun target and then he's got poisons and continuous heals on his a3 ability plus a juicy speed aura obviously that can be utilized in clan boss hey while we're here we might as well talk about skull crusher that's right he's still the only epic champion in the game with counterattack in his kit uh you know in the ally protection as we mentioned earlier so he's not doing a ton per se but what he does he does really really well don't you skull crusher Bombastic side eye. yeah buddy he's got the heal reduction which is kind of annoying we don't need it but again that ally protect in the counter attack unkillable on himself you love it. Decrease the duration of all debuffs on this champion by one turn at the start of each turn. Fantastic. And de decrease the duration of that stun at the start of his turn. Right? Great. All right, next up is going to be, we're going to stay here, guys. A cult brawler. Uh, a cult brawler still from my, he's, he's one dimensional. Let's be real with this dude. He's not doing anything other than a ton of damage. So if a ton of damage is what you're after, look no further than a cult brawler. He's placing uh, a poison, excuse me. He's placing 75% 75% chance of placing a poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns at the start of each turn. Uh, it's a great ability, a great champion. You don't even have to book this dude out. And as a matter of fact, some people say he's better without booking him. So he's fairly easy to build as well. Still my favorite poisoner out of epic champions for the clan boss. I do want to give a quick honorable mention. I feel like this guy, everybody kind of craps on him. But Aothar, he's still a great poisoner. 
I mean, he's got four poisons on a three turn cooldown. That's still a great ability. He's been power corrupt a little bit, but man, what else has he got? Not Nothing much else, but still, that's a good poison ability. Just a random shout out there to Aothar. I am not a hater like I would say 99% of the community is right on that guy. Rear Guard Sergeant, another champion who's, you know, a little long in the two. She's been around for a little bit, but she's got everything... Not everything, but a lot of what you need. Yeah, that decreased defense on the A1. Uh, on the A2, decreased attack. Great. Uh, she has 75% chance. It's on a three-turn cooldown, though. Uh, not bad. However, I'm really looking. It's going to be on three-turn cooldown. I really want it 100%. Especially, that's the new kind of standard in the game the last year. So, that's why she may have been a little power corrupt in that regard. Uh, however, she does have an ally protect and a con continuous heal. You know what? This is like the third champion who's had a continuous uh, or an ally protect on a three turn cooldown maybe it's not that rare of an ability ash come on you moron next up is going to be the old school talk about an old school champion that has not been power crept that would be uh none other than doom priest of course guys she's got the increased attack which is nice obviously uh but really the heal every single turn and the removal of a random debuff from the start of this champion's turn it's a great stun cleanse as well as that heal she's a part of a lot of unkillable teams as well uh especially kind of the easier teams to build i was running her in a warcaster team for a long time by the way shout out to Warcaster. I probably should have included him uh, in the list. And we'll give him a quick little, quick little honorable, quick little honorable here. You're really getting the top 32, right? Warcaster also has block damage on a four turn cooldown. It's only for one turn. He's been power crept quite a bit, but he is still usable in multiple comps if you don't have champions like Demitha, Helicath, etc., right? So he's still got it. He's still useful. Uh, same thing with Ursula. You know, shout out, right? Because she's one of the best. Uh, revivers you can have in the game she's good like everywhere right anyway back to the official list here guys sorry just doing some shout outs as i kind of think of other champions uh this is one that i don't think we've ever spoken about here on the channel at all it's syrian she's really cool uh very good for clan boss uh a two-time now i i choose syrian on the list even above a champion like Rowan, right? I was kind of on the fence on, on who I wanted to put in, but I really like her. She's got a po two poisons on the A1, big versions. She's got the big version of Weaken, very dependable, 70, but it's on 70%, but it's on each hit, right? So great version of the big Weaken. And then also on a three-turn cooldown, she's got the decreased defense big version. Okay. So it is an 80, but 85% with sniper is pretty dependable there. So, decreased defense, big version of weaken, and poisons. Very good champion worth your consideration uh, if you're lacking some of the more like OP option, legendary options for those debuffs out there in the game. Wanted to give her a shout out, include her on the list. All right, next up, guys, guys, is going to be Undead Horde Anax. So, Anax is a champion that I want to be real with you. I, I maxed him, but I've never tried him in Clan Boss. However, anecdotally, he's got a really good kit. And I've heard from so many players who love this dude. Uh, each hit has a 35% chance on the A1 of placing the big version of decreased defense. Again, because it's happening on each hit with Sniper, it's a 40% chance on each hit. It's fairly dependable. On the A2, we have a decreased accuracy and a poison for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. This is happening on each hit. So we get two poisons uh, for three turns and decreased accuracy. And then we're placing the big version of Weaken on a three-turn cooldown on the A3. Moreover, he hits very hard, so a great damage dealer and debuffer, similar in some ways to like a Fane type champion, right? Similar in some ways to a Syrian type champion. Next up is another newbie in the game, relatively speaking. It is Ruella. Ruella's great for, well, obviously Giant Slayer, right? Anytime you can get all these hits, we get three here, three here, and then we have this turn meter fill and an increased crit rate on all allies, three turn cooldown. Uh, you'd love to have that. And then uh, triple hitter, as I said, great for Giant Slayer, great for damage. On the A2 ability, it's on a four turn cooldown, but each hit, we have a 75, 80% chance with a sniper mastery of placing the big version of decreased defense big version of weaken and the big version of decreased speed so again decreased defense and weaken on an epic champion it's two turns on a four turn which is the only kind of the, the issue there to have a debuff extender on the same team you're going to use ruella is definitely advisable uh keep in mind she deals some nice damage too on top of that hey you know what 
Awkward moment of the video, guys. Awkward moment. I actually did. <laughs> My bad. I actually did uh, have Warcaster on the list. He was up next. Shout out. We love you, man. Nobody knows me. I'm cold. Walk down this road all alone. Next up, this is actually champion number 21 by my math, I think, uh, is going to be, oh man, Hatatsu. He is a just beast of a champion, man. Not just for clan boss. This is really one of the worst pair of wings in the game. Seriously, Hatatsu. I mean, what happened, dude? What happened, bro? But <laughs> he's a really good champion. Uh, good base stats for an epic. He's got defense in all battles, 25%. On the A1, he's got a leech. A lot of books, which is definitely a downside there. That's a eight books on the A1 is a lot. And then six more on the A2. Yuck. But... He is bringing that decreased attack, dependable, leech dependable, increased defense, and a continuous heal on all allies on a three-turn cooldown. Great ability. He'll remove stuns from himself at the start of each turn as well. He's really one of the best supports. He took a champion like, like Jareg and really cut him off the list for me, honestly. Uh, I really like Jareg still, but, I mean, this guy's really, really incredible with this ability. Very, very good champion. Next up is going to be none other than... God Seeker and Neri, of course, guys. Obviously, right? She's got heals on the A1. She got more heals on the A2. Increase the duration of all buffs uh, on all allies. Again, we talked about how important that is for clan boss for so many different types of comps. And then we have decreased the duration of all buffs on enemies uh, as well. She also got a great revive, uh, reset the cooldown of an ally's skills, and then the the uh, the emergency revive, so to speak, on the passive as well. So they kind of two revives just a great champion look at us we're moving up in the tournament we're not even doing anything you love that you love that all right or are we moving down in the tournament uh, i'm not sure what that means anyway next up guys is going to be another new ish champion it's my celiac priest orn Again, a great damage dealer and an instant activator. He's got two poisons on the A1, two chances of poisons. Not a massive chance, but he's got them. On the A2, he's instantly activating uh, poisons on each hit on a three-turn cooldown on the A3. He's placing two poisons, poison sensitivity as well as a heal. And then on the passive, whenever a poison debuff is activated on an enemy, increases champion's HP and defense by 5%, stacks up to 25%. I mentioned this in a video, kind of recently so forgive me for uh repeating myself here guys i invested in him like way late to the game last week or two weeks ago and man i really love this dude he's really cool he is kind of overshadowed by champions like dark kale but i'm uh i'm a fan I'm a, I'm a big fan of him all right guys next up is going to be we don't have to move far here it's white dryad naya another ally protector on a three turn cooldown but she's also bringing uh, a strengthen so that is by my math 65 percent damage mitigation for everybody on the team and again this is on a three turn cooldown very very good ability she has a uh, an excess heal share passive in her kit and then she has a uh, a cleanse on a target ally great for the stun a heal and decreases the cooldown of all of their skills by two turns you can have a lot of fun with that ability very very good champion there all right guys we're gonna kick it old school here with none other than separate Sentinel, Sep Sepul 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 Sentinel, Sepulcher Sentinel. I always struggle with her name. I apologize. I struggle with almost every name in this game. Honor A1, she's got decrease attack. Great. Honor A2, increase defense and block debuffs on a four turn cooldown. The good thing is, bad thing is, it's a four turn cooldown. The good thing is, is the block debuffs last for two turns. Not, not many people recognize or notice that if you're not already a fan of this champion, right? The two turn block debuffs is very good. If you work that in like a 4 3, you can keep them up when you need them, especially that block debuff. So very good there. And then she has a chance of completely blocking incoming damage when an ally is attacked on a one turn cooldown uh nice passive to add to an already really good kit for clan boss plus defense in all battles great defensive or a lead for non well obviously non unkillable teams where you'd be using a champion like this next up guys is going to be arguably one of the best epic champions in the game certainly that's going to be no different for clan boss and it's none other than geomancer of course of course geo's great 
plate everywhere, and that's no exception for Dame Demon Lord Clan Boss. He's got the big version of Weaken on a three turn cooldown. You absolutely love it. Moreover, we have the HP Burn passive that you're all probably acquainted with. Uh, but I love the fact that it also has that damage mitigation of 15%. So the damage mitigation plus the damage plus the big version of Weaken makes him a tremendous champion for the old school Demon Lord. I don't know why men, why uh, more people don't consider him one of the better clan boss champs out there in the game uh he's really really good all right guys we have a few more left actually we we're right there let's just talk about her right Ah, oh, Morag Bronze Lock. She's so good, man. I love this little dwarf. I've mentioned it so many times. I actually put out a video on her right when she was released. A lot of people, I, I, I'm not going to name any names, but a lot of people gave me grief. They were like, Ash likes this trash champion. And then I remember it was Hades, one of those clan boss content, the uh, uh, contest rather, the content creators have together. I forgot what the parameters were, uh, but... I remember Hades played Morag Bronze Lock and he actually made a video. In that video, he's like, dude, Ash was right. He was right about this champion. She slays a lot of damage. She's bringing the big version of Strengthen on a three turn cooldown. There's only one epic in the game. Maybe, is there a new one that was just added that has this? I don't think so. Only epic in the game with a big version of strength, and that's 25% damage mitigation. That's really, really nice on that three turn cooldown. Uh, and then she has the ally attack. Ally attack's great. Even if it's two random allies, it's still a great ability. Think of all those decreased attacks that are on those A1s or decreased defenses that we can, or the poisons, right? All of those are going to have a chance to trigger with the Raider Captain uh, with this champion. Counterattacks when hit while under strength and buff placed by this champion. So she's going back in there for the raw iron slab, which deals nice damage on that A1. Boy, I'm a big fan of Morag. Can you tell? Uh, two more on the list. Actually, three more on the list. My bad. We have Sandlash Survivor, guys. Guys, she's great. I mean, she's great. She's got again. I mean, we keep talking about it, but you can see how valuable this is. And you know, I feel like I've mentioned this six times in the video or three times or whatever, but I pretty much named most of the champions that have this ability. It's it's very unique, and that is the decrease the duration of enemy buffs and increase the duration of ally buffs. Very, very, very good. Think about that with us with a, a Sepulcher Sentinel. It's going to increase the duration of that uh, of that block debuffs to three turns. And that increased defense to three turns as well. She also has the ally protect on all allies for two turns when any allies H uh, HP drops below 50%. And the block damage on this champion to help keep her alive through the ally protection. Just a great synergy in this kit. Great champion overall, guys. All right, guys. We have... I actually really love this dude. He's a free champion for everybody. He's a login champion. And it is Grush the Mangler. Grush is not like... It's weird. He's not... He doesn't... You look at his kit and it's not super intuitive. Clan Boss God! But he's really good at support. He's got the Leech on the A1. A 75% 80 with Sniper on the A1. He's got the, the decrease attack on the A2 or decrease crit damage. I wish it was just decrease attack, but he's got it in his kit. Not super dependable. I like to have another champion on the team. But really this ability... The big version of Continuous Heal on all allies, and the weak version of Continuous Heal on all allies, as long as you get a critical hit. Uh, again, as long as you're going not going into Magic Affinity Clan Boss, he's really a great healer, and the nice thing about him is, he's easy to keep alive, he's defense-based, and he does a sneaky amount of damage as well. Uh, the last champion on the list today, guys, and I'm sure I've snubbed a bunch. There's a lot of great epics in the game. I'm going to kick it old school and give it to the OG. He's still on my list. It's Tayrell. Still on my list. When I started playing this game, he was the best of the best. Now he's been power crept a bit, uh, but he's still very good. He's defense based, easy to keep alive. He's got the defense in all battles aura by 25%. He's got the decrease attack on the A1, 50% chance on both hits. He's got the decrease defense. And if the target's under a de well, just the decrease defense, we don't care about the uh, the sleep. Uh, but then after that, he's decreasing turn meter. He's fully depleted. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, he's got the decreased defense and he's got the decreased attack. There you go. The sleep and the turn meter are not going to matter, obviously, in Clan Boss and Demon Lord. But it does matter, like, in a bunch of other areas. I still think that Tyrell is 
quite a good, not just clan boss, but quite a good overall all around champion inside the game. And there you go, guys. That is 30, maybe a few bonuses sprinkled in of the best epic clan boss champions in the game. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I want to thank you for watching all the way till the end of the video. My true OG viewers, subscribers, hopefully, maybe click the subscribe button, maybe, I don't know. Maybe if you like the content, thank you so much, guys. Have a great day, and as always, take care, guys.